Welcome back to Low Buck Garage. A little while ago, my Jeep decided it was tired of producing energy and uh, it was just going to use up all the battery juice it had. Uh, which isn't a big deal on an older Jeep when you're running a carburetor in points because they don't take much electricity. You go for a week without a charging system. On something like this with fuel injection, electronic ignition, and all that fancy electronic stuff, uh, you don't go very long without having a charging system. Once that alternator stopped working, I didn't have very long before I barely made it home sputtering and dying because it needed more juice. By the way, around 8-9 volts, that's the limit of what these can run on. But uh, I figured I probably should do something about it because I like driving that vehicle. So uh, here's what I did. Apparently my Jeep didn't really want to be uh, charging anymore. Now the other day I was driving it. Notice that voltmeter isn't going up at all. Uh, it's showing probably 10-ish or so. That's not actually true. I put a plug-in voltmeter on it to see what it's actually doing. And uh, it's got a little more, but not a whole lot. Now, interestingly, it only shows you the right voltage for a little while. Now it's going to warn me pretty soon that I don't have any voltage and to check my gauges. There it goes. Alright, so warning light of check gauges comes on. Voltage on the voltmeter was reading right, now drops down to nothing. There it goes. Now that is not true, that gauge is lying to me. That is a more accurate number. Still low, but that's plausible. 11 point something. I do not believe it's under nine. Got my alternator out. Now these four liter Jeeps are so common uh, that there is probably one of these alternators sitting on the shelf of every single parts store in the country. So the central thing is to go to a parts store and uh, pick up a new one. But, um, I'm not gonna do that. Because I'm not gonna pay for another housing, and more windings, when those parts usually don't wear out. What I did do is buy a rebuild kit. They came with brushes and bearings. Rather than just replace this alternator, which could be done in probably 10 minutes or so, we're gonna spend a long time working on tearing it apart because uh, it's more fun that way. That looks like it got a little hot. Yep. That actually looks like it's the problem. Looks like we found our problem already. Uh, that brush looks totally worn out, like it's not actually contacting. Here you can see right on the armature, how the brushes were coming loose of contact. So that looks like that's definitely our problem. I could just replace these and uh, it's right at the end, so it's really easy to do. So uh, let's see how the bearings feel. These bearings don't feel too bad. If you run into this, you might just be able to get away with replacing the brushes, pop the back off, pop them on. It almost looks like I could have done this in the vehicle. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and tear it down and do the bearings anyway because uh, i got a few hours to kill. Probably should have used a press to do that, but it worked. Boom, bearings out. I don't know if you can hear that. It actually sounds like I'm glad I'm replacing it. It went much smoother. Now this side's a lot more delicate. You have those uh, copper connectors on the armature. So what I'm gonna do is use a punch on the end, try to tap it through. Again, this is something you could probably use a press for. 
I have one over there, but it takes a while to set up and it's buried. I managed to get it out. It's a little touch and go. I cracked a little bit of the insulation here, but I don't think that's going to be a big deal. Uh, but this bearing, I'm really glad I'm replacing that one. That looks pretty bad. So we're going to go ahead and pull this off, pop the new one on. I hit the point that it's clear as day that this is a bad idea. Um, going and getting an alternator and just replacing it was definitely the smart move. Hopefully you did that and aren't going to try this. Because what I found is I got to pull this bearing off. It's pressed onto that shaft. I can't get under it to pull it. None of the jaws of any puller I have will actually fit underneath that bearing to pop it out. Now they make specialized tools that do this. And if people you build alternators all the time, they probably have them. I do not. So uh, yeah, pretty much what I should do now is call this a lesson learned and go get an alternator. But what I'm going to do is take a couple of uh, 3 8 inch nuts, weld them to this old bearing, and attempt to use a different kind of puller to pop this thing off there. Because, uh, yeah, I still got a little time to kill. Got the nuts welded on there. It hooked to this puller. So now let's see if this works, or if I just go buy a new alternator. Felt something move. Well, if you're ever in a pinch that does work, as ugly as it may be, just used a piece of uh, Scotch-Brite, cleaned that stuff right up, took the extra rust off the shaft, uh, hit the other side too. Um, did a little grinding where I mushroomed that end so this was back to normal again-ish. And uh, we're ready to reinstall. I'm gonna use a little WD-40 on these uh, bearing areas uh, that'll make it easier to press on, and then this stuff should evaporate away eventually. You don't actually need oil there, but um, it'll help when we go to put this thing together. Try to spray it over other stuff on your table too. That helps. I'm going to drive them on with a socket. One thing you want to do, make sure you use a socket that's just big enough to fit over the bearing area. Hear the change in pitch? It's all the way seated. The large bearing is actually retained inside the housing with a plate and some bolts. So that has to go in the housing first, and then we're gonna put it over the shaft with the housing. This one, bearing goes on first, and it just slips into the housing. Uh, I'm gonna clean that up a little bit and pop it on. And that's just a slip fit, didn't even need to press. Uh, just didn't come apart before because of the rust. I'm just going to tap around the edges and uh, try to drive in as straight as possible. Be careful doing this, you don't want to damage the seal. Basically what you want to do is any high spot that looks like it's up a little, tap that down, it'll walk its way in. Now we have the plate, which I didn't pay attention to which way it went in. You could see where the screws were, so we know that side is up. And uh, yeah, we'll just see how it fits. That looks fine. All right, now we're gonna slide the housing together. And it just slides right together. We shouldn't have had to have hit it apart. That's just because it was old and crusty. But uh, everything just slid in place. Looks like, uh, yeah, just hand pressure put it all together. So now we can bolt it down and work on the electronic bits. I almost forgot the pulley. I'm gonna pop this on before the electronic parts and uh, that way I can check and make sure it all seems like it's spinning nice. There she goes. That sounds good. I don't know if I actually showed you this. On these uh, conductors here, there are little rubber pieces. They started falling out of me, so I just popped them out. But we gotta remember to put those back in, otherwise, uh, we're going to have a short because they keep it from like burning up stuff. It looks like I bent a wire a little bit here. So we'll just sort of shove it somewhere. It looks like it's going through the center of the hole and assume that'll all work fine. There we go. Something like that. 
Copper bends easy. All right. This actually connects all those. So pop this on here. Do, 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 do. Yep, that even lined up. Alrighty. Now, pay attention to stuff that falls off. In this case, looks like this thing fell off the bottom of these brushes. Uh, if you wait, pay attention to them from me off, you can put them back in. So I'm gonna put it in now before I forget. And you can see the indentation of how it went. It matches the backside here. So you can get the orientation from the impression on it. Oops, shouldn't have put that screw in yet. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. All right, now we get to put the brushes in. These are uh, spring loaded, so you have to make sure you get them over the shaft. Um, I think just doing it with a screwdriver, we could push them back, slide it in, kind of wiggle it in place, then push up the other brush into its holder. Slide the whole thing. A little wiggling, a little shoving, it all pops together. All right, the spins inside. They ride nice on there. Uh, put up some shielding and so forth. Oh, those screws go on top. Shouldn't have put those on either. There are times where you could actually pay attention to what you're doing when you take it apart. But other times it's just fun to make it up as you go along. I do the making it up as I go along most of the time. I know that didn't look quite right. All right, let's try this. So this one, there's two there. Must go in this orientation. Oh yeah, that's looking better. That looks like what's supposed to be happening. So that's it. Got our alternator done. New bearings, new brushes, everything that normally wears out is new. And uh, this should be good for another 100,000 miles, if it works. And uh, the best part is, we saved several dollars and spent several hours, including welding, to do this. So, uh, bonus. Let's go put it in and see if it works. The alternator's in, I'm gonna show you something real quick. Um, these alternators are kind of buried under the AC compressor with the battery box right here. You definitely want to take out the battery to work on it. When I initially took it out, I went that way, which you can make it through all this, this stuff here, but um, it is not pleasant. Um, going back in, I went through the front and it went down and in, mainly because this battery box here is already broken off. Um, probably the smart way to do this is to remove this whole battery box and then you get a lot of access. But um, if you have one that's partially broken and it becomes a little more broken here, um, it'll, it'll fit in pretty decent without removing this at all. So I just wanted to show you that before I went and put the battery in and give this a shot. All right, so moment of truth. Let's see what this thing does. All right, not running. Running. That looks like something useful. I like that. This one right here, 13 and a half, perfect. And that's it, it's working great now. I've actually been running it for a while, uh, no problems charging, and I've been enjoying the bountiful 13 and a half volts. So uh, I'm gonna keep driving around and uh, enjoy this nice day. You guys keep having fun too, we'll see you next time.